Aloha Wina La, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland, Fridays at 3 p.m., keeping it on the bright side and off the grid. Today we're going to explore the uniquely Hawaiian land tenure system Mark Zuckerberg recently ran afoul of, Kuleana lands. My guest is the president of the Native Hawaiian Bar Association, Paul F. Nahua Lucas. Mr. Lucas is a licensed attorney currently serving as senior counsel for the Education Legal Division at Kamehameha Schools, advising Kamehameha on the issues relating to education, employment, intellectual property, and Native Hawaiian rights. Aloha, welcome, and um, as far as we know, we're not related, but we might be on the Hawaiian side, just not on the Lucas side, if anybody's <laughs> wondering. Aloha, nice to be here, thank you. So. Um, Mr. Zuckerberg um, ran afoul of some, what I understand from you is new legislation or actually old legislation that he was trying to avoid the new legislation from. At any rate, for most people, it's a little confusing what happened. And so thank you for coming and sharing your, your considerable experience um, with the Native Hawaiian Legal Corp. You were there for Eight years, Eight years as a staff attorney and another 15 plus as the president for the board. So you've seen this issue of Kuleana lands from many sides. Yes, we, uh, the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation received the grant from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to represent Native Hawaiians who are defendants in these kind of action. Quiet title action is a, a legal term. Quiet title is a legal term for determining the title, who owns the title. Um, and, and the history of this is that um, up until uh, OHA provided us with the grant back in the, in the early 80s, there was no kind of work being done. And so many of these Kuleana lands were being taken through adverse possession um, and largely for a, you know, a mere pittance. Um, and some were not even being compensated at all. So Kuleana lands, uh, where did they come from? What, what are they? Kuleana uh, re refers to, it used to be, uh, it meant Hawaiian, it meant responsibility um, or, or interest. Um, after 1850, it referred to a parcel of land, plot of land, which was either a house lot or agricultural land. Usually it was irrigated uh, tarot terraces, uh, which were awarded um, during the kingdom in 1850, two years after the Mahele of 1848. And these plots of land uh, had the rights of access uh, to and from a public road. They also had the rights of water. They could uh, use water from a stream and also uh, gathering in undeveloped areas um, of the surrounding parcels. Of the surrounding parcels, regardless of who the owner was. That is correct. And that is something that is very, very special and unique. And it was created during a time when we were making the transition from our traditional land tenure to our Western system of what we know today uh, of, of a private property ownership. And so these kuleana are really a, a thumbprint or an imprint of that traditional land tenure system that existed uh, and, and oftentimes was inconsistent uh, and conflicted with the subsequent commercial use of the surrounding lands, which was uh, sh for sugar, uh, for ranching, et cetera. So are there a lot of Kuleana lands? Uh, the, the total number of Kuleana lands that were awarded back during the, pursuant to the act of August 6, 1850, was approximately 100, 100,000 acres statewide. So it's, it's, it's very little, but they are scattered throughout the state. Um, and uh, uh, you know, some of them range as small as a quarter acre all the way up to six, seven, eight acres. Any idea how many of them there are? Uh, that, that still exist today? Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't done uh, an inventory of that, okay. so uh, <laughs> not really sure. So it was set up as a way of, of, of integrating um, traditional Hawaiian uh, land, didn't have land tenure, actually. Uh, and and, in and the so when days. yes, when they set up this transition period, they said, if you want to file a claim for fee simple title to land, you needed to file it within a two-year period, which is 1846 to 1848. And so everybody filed, both chiefs and tenants. Now you can imagine at that time there was this cultural, you know, learning curve about you know, do I really get to own 
land. And, and for some, they, they made the transition well. For others, it was, it was a real struggle. Uh, who claims, um, sometimes you had the head of the household claiming on behalf of 15 or 16 family members. Uh, Whereas maybe, you know, you'd say, why doesn't everybody claim? Well, culturally, it was for the elder or the head of the household to make that claim. And um, the, the and concept of ownership uh, wasn't exactly a, a familiar one. That's right. If you look at some of the early land records and the, and the claims that are filed, many of the tenants claim um, use rights as opposed to title. They say, well, I would like to use that spring. I would like to use uh, that hollow tree over there because I always gather my lauhala to make my mats. I would like, um, uh, and, and so you have all of these use rights which uh, in real property law really doesn't um, guarantee the preservation of that particular resource. And so this was started actually um, uh, uh, by a King Kamehameha III, Kawi Keoli, who received interesting a lot of opposition from his privy council, his Ahaku Kamalu, the chiefs, um, because they did, they, they, they did not want to recognize all of these rights that involved uh, uh, going out to someone else's property, to go into Mauka, go down to the shoreline, uh, getting rights of water. But Kawiki was very insistent and said, if, if these people do not have these type of rights, the land that we award them is valueless. Right. And so let us give them that. And, that's what we have it's today. It's an amazing, amazing um, way of, of taking care of this really thorny problem of integrating two really different systems. So um, as the years have gone on, um, uh, family in, is, have generations, the interest has, has come down to small, small percentages, and that's presented problems. Um, can you talk about... Um, how the Kuiana lands have, um, w the work that you did at Native Hawaiian Legal Corp, for instance, in helping families who are facing problems, either they, they don't know where they are or um, you know who, who owns the rest of it. So what, what have you had to do? I mean. Well, typically what happens is the landowner who, who seeks to quiet title a uh, piece of property has to publish it in the newspaper. And that's where most of our, our clients at Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation would see. They would see their name or the name of an ancestor or a family member would tell them, hey, look, I saw your auntie's name in the paper. Go check it out. Uh, and that's required by law. They have to give notice to everybody. And that's um, uh, uh, part and parcel of the course. Um, Oftentimes, it costs money to hire an attorney to, to be Oftentimes. represented, <laughs> going, going to court. And so that's what was the purpose of this, of this uh, grant that we received from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And since the, since the early 1980s, Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation has been the defender uh, and protector for, for, for land titles. We go in there. Um, sometimes they wouldn't know how they are connected genealogically. We would assist them by doing genealogical searches wow. in the Department of Health, in the Bureau of Conveyances, also checking on the land title to make sure that their ancestor did not convey it out uh, so that they, so the interest still passed down to them. And these types of uh, fractionated interests are, are actually quite common among, among our Kuleana owners. And it's just due to the nature of it. And it's, it's not unique in other indigenous um, um, uh, communities. For example, uh, Indian tribes, they receive allotments from the federal government. They have the same issues where the, the, the interest just gets fractionated as it gets handed down. Estates are not probated and uh, people have to make a decision uh, one way or the other about you know, what to do with the property because it does become uh, unwieldy uh, if, and, and every family is different as to how they approach these problems. But you have uh, issues about one line is paying the taxes uh, for other, uh, other people, we call them the deadbeat relatives. They don't pay, but yet they don't want to give up their interest or sell, and so it becomes a stalemate. We have people who want to use the property, others who don't, but they don't want that person to be living on the property. Um, so you so what do you do? It. So what do you do? Well, the law says that you can uh, file uh, what's called a quiet title and partition action. That's one of the ways legally to force the determination of, 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 of owners of the property. That's the quiet title piece of it. And then the second piece of it is a partition. 
And the partition statute up until very recently said that uh, the, the court could look at uh, a lot of different factors. He could, uh, he or she, the judge could look at whether it would, it could be partitioned in kind, which meant you you would cut it up into a physical piece for that particular uh, uh, co-tenant based on their interest, or they could sell it. And the sale was usually at public auction on the steps of a courthouse uh, to the highest bidder. Um, that law has since changed. Uh, it, 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 it did not favor the Kuleana owner because essentially what it did was it forced someone that, that had a lot of money. Uh, uh, it, could, it could be one of the co-tenants <clears throat> or it could be somebody at the end uh, when, it, when it went to a public auction uh, to just purchase the, purchase the Kuleana and, 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 and uh, share, share the proceeds or, or pay off the pay off the owners and then uh, have clear title to the property. So just to m make sure I understand, if if they uh, showed up at the for an auction, and how did how did that work? How did it, the judge just said, okay, well we have to go to auction, or it automatically went to auction if they didn't, if they couldn't, if they didn't have large enough um, parcels to to divide? Well, what they would try to do, if, if they wanted to get a better price, they could uh, uh, negotiate among all the owners and they had to agree to um, have it at a sale, a private sale. But if not, the court would then establish, a uh, would, would appoint a real, real estate commissioner, and that commissioner would then um, uh, have the property appraised, get a minimum upset price based on the appraised property, and then have an auction. And uh, they'd, they'd go to the steps of the courthouse and say, this is the minimum upset price. And then the bidding would start. And, um, and so you Uncle Joe just, had no way to hold on to the piece of property? That's correct. You Even could, though he'd left it, been living there his whole life? That's correct. You could consolidate your interests. And then uh, based on what, what the fair market value was, you could, you could take that percentage of interest and use that uh, as a credit bid. Um, but basically, if you had somebody that had more money and power and who wanted that piece of property and outbid you, it went to the highest that bidder. That was it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but something changed. Uh, last year, <laughs> what changed? Well, there was a recent amendment to the partition phase of the property uh, side of the law, and uh, it took effect uh, January of this year, and it's uh, called the Uniform Partition of Heirs Property Act, and it's a series of the uniform property laws that uh, or or uniform laws that are usually adopted by these commissioners nationwide, and then they propose it for use and then it's up to the states as to whether or not they want to adopt them. And so Hawaii passed this law in July of last year to take effect as of January 1st, 2017. Well, and then that sort of erupted all over the headlines with Mr. Zuckerberg trying to um, get his um, issues settled. Um, you know, just to uh, help ed educate people here, we have a picture of the paper. But um, uh, so that was set off by this new law. And um, we're going to take a little be break and then come back and explore the issue further. Thank okay. you. Bye. Aloha. My name is John Waihe. And I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Waihe. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas, and with me here is Paul F. Nahua Lucas, who is the president of the Native Hawaiian Bar Association 
and um, doing a very good job explaining the intricacies of our unique title and quiet title um, issues here. Thank you so much. Um, so you were just explaining about the the partition part of this, where um, a Kuyana, Kuyana owners um, might have to sell um, at an auction if there wasn't something else um, worked out among them. Yes, and and uh, and, and and so the law, uh, the old law, uh, basically said that you could ask that the that the that the property be partitioned in kind, which is everybody gets a, a, a piece. But if the property is too small and cannot be um, legally subdivided, then the court would be forced to consider a sale. So why uh, might uh, Mr. Zuckerberg have um, wanted to, to use this? Um, I, I don't know all the facts well, to, to, to the I, case, I except I, I, I do know that he did bring, buy a, a large tract of land uh, on on uh, Kauai, and that uh, I guess there are many there are many of these kuleana that are in within these um, within his parcel his his larger parcel. Um, I think for most people who who uh, purchase these tracks and maybe you're not familiar with the history of land title in Hawaii, uh, it is an inconvenience. Uh, they do not like to see people uh, crossing their lands at any time of the day, uh, any hour of the night. Um, maybe they don't like their uh, laundry that's being hung out uh, to dry uh, where they can see it from their uh, million dollar estate. I don't know those reasons, but that's usually um, for for ranches and, and plantations, a lot of them historically um, found it an inconvenience in, in developing the property, making paddocks, and whether it be paddocks or it be um, uh, uh, plantation acreages, um, it was just a real inconvenience to uh, provide access uh, within these commercial parcels to the Kuleana owner, uh, put your Put, put a fence or put some kind of buffer around those parcels um, because they didn't have clear title, uh, they, they did not have title to them. And so that's what I guess um, was the motive. Um, for other owners that are, that are co-tenants within the parcel, um, oftentimes it's, as I explained earlier, it's a historical um, uh, inability to get cooperation among the tenants to develop the property. Uh, Lack of paying property taxes is 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 one of the factors. Um, so we have some. Ch so the there's so many many different reasons. Yeah. So there's the, there's the change that you explain in the partition law, and that the reason Mr. Zuckerberg um, filed when he did, evidently we don't know for sure, was to be fall under the old law. And what is so the new law as as come forth. And how do you see this impacting um, Native Hawaiians? Well, so, so going back to your point, if, if, if he was a co-plaintiff in this lawsuit, then he had to have purchased an interest in that kuleana. Otherwise, if you're a surrounding landowner, you cannot force the kuleana owners to, to go through this quiet title action. Okay, that's an so, important point. So he had to have purchased an interest from somebody. Um, and that basically, uh, we have seen this time and time again, where somebody purchases an interest, um, then goes through this uh, uh, process, and at the end uh, stands waiting to outbid um, uh, anybody at, at, at the courthouse. And then once that's done, property is transferred over, title is trans transferred over, and it, it is subsumed into the larger award. Okay, so the new the new rules are what? So the new rules, the the Uniform Partition of Various Property Act, which is which goes into effect as of January first, really attempts to to kind of rein in that ability to 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 um, uh, force the sale to someone if they if the co-tenants uh, primarily families that have owned the property for a long time um, desire to, to make some use of it, desire to keep it. And so a lot of the controls that are, that are in the new law is, for example, if, 
uh, if somebody is requesting a sale, the judge has to look at that, has to appoint uh, a non-biased uh, real estate you know, appraiser, um, has to conduct the sale fairly, uh, make sure that other, you know, everybody is paid. Uh, if there are unknown heirs, they have to set aside uh, you know, that, that amount um, in, in the event that they do come forward uh, at a later point in time. Um, the the co-tenants can can mobilize, and the law says I believe it's 20 percent of the co-tenants if they feel like they want to, um, e you know, uh, keep the property. They can um, uh, they can uh, if if there is a sale, they can then ask the ask the person who is initiating the sale. We would like to buy out your interest, and so it's almost almost like a option a first a first right of refusal um, but there there are a lot more check, checks and balances the court cannot just automatically say okay uh, we can't subdivide this legally under the county zoning uh, and uh, building code standards we have to sell it they have to look at other factors and one of them is like the cultural tie historical ties that that the co-tenants have to the property which before that was not a consideration it's now a consideration in the law so makes it a, a lot more difficult for uh, for them to 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 determine and sell the property so have you do you have any idea if it's been been used the new law has it has it been tried yet in the courts or, uh, uh, being that it's so so new and not to my knowledge uh, not to my knowledge and and it's going to be uh, real interesting to see how courts um, interpret this so who pays for all of that um, process it sounds sort of expensive um, you know looking into having the courts look into the case does the is the state paying for it is the who who pays for well it? usually the court um, it, it, it will come to the court on appeal and that's when the court will issue some kind of pronouncement as to what the law is and um, because the courts are the interpreters of the law and so it will not happen usually unless there is a dispute and someone takes this um, to court and is dissatisfied for whatever reason with the outcome and chooses to appeal. Okay, and then we've seen as a result of all of the attention, and who knew that it would be an international um, sensation, uh, dear Pila, um, that um, there's been legislation proposed, and I think you might have had a chance to look a little bit at these new bills that are um, uh, making their way in the legislature. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, uh, there's, there's one bill that um, would require that the court order mediation to try and, I guess, resolve the, the, the claims that are um, uh, that are that are before the court and um, uh, the other the other uh, law I'm I'm uh, escapes me right now but uh, okay. uh, what, I mean not the law but the uh, proposed legislation but um, they they call into question I mean the the, the ability I mean it, it, it gets uh, as we had discussed earlier this this um, raises Questions, I think, from a property uh, interest, because we're so uh, we're, we're our, our Western system of property ownership is so strong uh, that that basically the these new proposed legislations are basically telling the property owner what they can and cannot do uh, with their property, and I think that it could be subject to some kind of constitutional um, challenge. I think I think I'm remembering it. Uh, that one of the bills um, insists that you, uh, that the person bringing the action have 50% or more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I don't know what it is now. Is that the 20%? Yeah, the 20% uh, uh, is actually for the partition, for the partition. Uh, phase of it. But actually anybody that has any interest can, can. can bring. So thank you for, for pointing that out. So the 50% then sets, sets a greater threshold. So it says, any, if I have 1% of the property, I could not file an action to, to have, my, have my interest determined and possibly um, sold and get, and get compensated for it because I didn't have, you know, I, I didn't meet the minimum threshold set by the law. 
and you know I'm not saying that it's 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 uh, it, you know the challenge has merit, but I'm but I'm sure that that, that it's going to raise those kind of issues. Um, uh, it's going to raise the issues of, as far as uh, how do you see this? I know you're just jumping into it right now, but can you think as a as an attorney who's been dealing with these kind of things how it might play out in the low E, I mean, in the real world of Hawaiian uh, families who are dealing with Kuleana title? I mean, how does that, how does that, how does that work? Um, if you're a family and, and you have all these heirs and you, you don't know where they are, but you know, there's the, there's the handful, right, that have, that have been there and are showing up and, you know, really planting the low E and, and doing the harvest yeah. and doing it and then you know, uncle from Cincinnati comes back and says, hey, wow, this is pretty cool. I want to do something here. Or uh, just the opposite. Why or is the he, opposite. Why is he there? And, you know, he shouldn't be doing this. Right. And, uh, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very thorny issue, and um, uh, there's no easy solution to it. I think uh, what we tried to do, and I think we still still do at, at the Native Point Legal Corporation, was um, we encourage the families to um, form what we call land trusts. And they're similar to like the large land trusts, like, uh, you know. Trust for public land? Um, no. Uh, private land trusts. Private. Like, okay. like or, or a charitable trust, like, uh, like a Kamehameha Schools or, or, or Queen Emma. Uh, or Queen Liliokalani, but uh, having it organized, let's say you have 800 pe people who have an interest, uh, what the land trust would do is they, they would say, okay, you take all of that interest and you convey it into this land trust, and in exchange you get shares. Uh, and so your trustees, okay. and then and then each family member, or ho however the family wants to organize it, gets to uh, elect trustees and those trustees will then manage the property so you'll have eight trustees as opposed to 800. Well thank you so much um, Paul for explaining this thorny issue and this is a picture of your book that I have been enjoying for years oh. <laughs> and um, uh, good luck <laughs> and I hope uh, that we can have you back at ThinkTex another time. All right pleasure to be here thank you. Kaui.